Hey everybody, John Flynn here from Insightful Recordings, and today we are going to be doing a bit of a guitar cab mic placement shootout. Now, most of my mixes, I tend to use digital amp and cab emulations because I like the ability to drastically switch the tone at the click of a button. But every once in a while, I do mic up a physical guitar cab. I'll be honest though, when I do, I don't really spend that much time picking mic placement. I kind of set the mic, forget it, and if I want to change the tone, I adjust the amp settings. I don't really go moving around the mic trying to find the perfect spot on the speaker. But today, we're going to throw that mentality out the window and try a whole bunch of different mic placements and try and figure out which is the best. Now, the best is going to be kind of a hard thing to determine because uh, guitar tone is definitely a subjective thing and heavily depends on the mix you're working on, but I still think it'll be cool to go through and just hear all these different variations side by side and see maybe what is the most easily usable out of them. Our process is going to be miking three different positions on the speaker. We'll be doing the edge of the cap in between the edge of the cone and the edge of the cap and then the edge of the cone. So three points on the speaker, then we're going to do two different distances, close mic'd and far mic'd, like, I don't know, a foot or less away, just a little bit further away from the cab. And then we're going to be doing three different angles at each of those positions. We're going to do on axis, slightly off axis, and then a hard off axis. This puts us at, I think, 18 different positionings, which is a lot, but I don't know. For the sake of the video, I think it'll be fun and we'll, maybe we'll learn something along the way. For our off-axis positionings, we're only going to be angling one direction. We're going to be angling outward toward the edge of the speaker cab so that we're not pointing towards the other speakers. I was thinking about including both directions in this test, but again, then we're just adding so many more variations. Also, we're not going to be doing miking on the back of the cab because, again, way too many variations. We're already at 18, and I think that's plenty to get us a good test going. The mic we're going to be using is a Shure SM57 because I'm sure many of you have this microphone, and it's kind of the go-to standard for miking up guitar cabs amongst plenty other things. It's just an easily accessible microphone that I believe will be a good representation of all the results we're trying to acquire today. Our process for this is going to be using a DI from an old mix I did, sending it through a digital guitar amp out of my interface through my Matrix GT1000FX power amp, and then out of that into my Blackstar 4x12. We're going to mic up the cab and track that same guitar DI at all 18 different positions, compare them all soloed out, and then get the best few out of them and actually hear them in a full mix. Again, I would do all 18 in a mix, but I just think that's going to be so much time. We're going to have to wind it down to a few at some point. So with all that being introduced, let's jump right in and start making this happen. So the song we're going to be using is called Leech. It's by Somewhere to Call Home. And I'm picking it, even though it's a few years old, I just think it has some cool guitar parts that will be fun to use for this test. Uh, the section we're going to be using is right here. So that's the section that we'll be pulling the DI from right there. Um, I just think since it's a transition between two very different parts, it'll be a cool way to see how the mic placement really affects the guitar tone. The guitar amp that we're going to be using for this, uh, for the sake of simplicity, is not only the same one that I originally used in this mix, but it is also a cheap plugin that you can get online from a company called TSE. It's called the X50 and it's a digital emulation of the PV5150. I think we're pretty much going to leave the plugin settings how I had them set for this mix. Just mute the cabinet here in the chain, send it out of my interface and see how it sounds. We have a whole lot of tracking ahead of us. So let's get started.
All right, so it's been a couple of days, but we're back. I needed a little bit of time away from this because that was a lot of tracking the other day, but at least I've had some time to gather my thoughts. And yeah, let's see what we have here. So all the reds are our on-axis positions. All of the purples are our 20 degree off axis, and then all the blue are 45 degree off axis. And then it goes cap edge, between the cap and the cone edge, and then the cone edge. Cap edge, between the cap and the cone edge, cone edge. And then in the bright colors, we have our close. In the dark colors, we have our far. So close, far, close, far. Hopefully that's laid out clear enough. Um, I guess my initial impressions of this test is I'm actually really surprised at the difference in tone that we got across all of these. Honestly, all these different positions are completely usable in different applications. I think none of them are bad. There's obviously very big difference between all of them. And I'm actually kind of bummed that I have spent all these years being so quick to choose a mic position rather than really trying to figure out which part of the speaker sounds best for whatever mix I'm working on. But at least now I know for the future. So let's start listening to the different positions on the speaker. We're going to do all of our on axis close and just hear the differences that we get the further you move from the cap. Now, typically you'd expect that the further you move from the cap, the darker tone you get. Uh, let's just see if that's true. And yeah, we get the exact results we expect. But it's kind of interesting. If you listen to the cone edge here, you're losing a lot of the high mids, like the real like crunchiness of the tone, but you're still getting a lot of super high end hiss in there, which is stuff you're gonna be taking out anyways. So it's almost like you're still getting the crap, but you're losing some of the good stuff. On the between the cap edge and cone edge, uh, we get, we actually, it's almost like we have less of that high end hiss and more of the crunchiness, the actual pick attack. Comparing the cap edge to the between the cap and the cone edge. It's almost as if the, the middle position already takes out a lot of the high end stuff that you'd want to get rid of anyways and preserves the actual pick attack while the cap edge kind of has a little bit of everything. It does sound a little bit fuller, but that might just be a kind of perceived fullness because it is a little bit louder. You can even see just by looking at the waveforms there. On a second listen there, it almost sounds like this one actually has a little bit more low end in there, more usable low end. Uh, this one actually seems to be lacking a little bit. So out of the three of these, I actually like this position the best. This is the in between the cap edge and the cone edge. So mid cone, I guess we'll call it from here on out. Now staying on the on axis, let's compare distance. So let's just compare the cap edge of the close to the cap edge of the far. <laughs> So I was actually kind of surprised with this one. Uh, I did not expect that the the further distance would give you more high end. I guess I kind of expected to get more of a darker tone by moving away, but I got the complete opposite. I guess it does make sense though, because you're not getting a lot of the boominess by being right up next to the cabinet. But then again, I guess I, I still did expect a little bit of a darker tone at the further distance. Right now as they stand, they definitely sound a little bit thinner overall at the further distance. Uh, you're losing a whole lot of the low mids. Let's compare the one we liked of the close to the same position on the far. Yeah, I still think I like the close a bit more because the high end that we're getting out of the far position is the type of high end hiss that 
is going to be really hard to get rid of while still making the tone sound natural. It's going to start to sound overly EQ'd once you start to pull a lot of that out. Whereas this close position, that same hissy frequency that we're hearing in the far is nowhere near as present in the close. So I think our winner on the on axis position is the mid cone close. Now let's try and listen to the mid cone close on the other angles. So let's start with a 20 degree. Let's check out the 45 degree. Now the 45 degrees sounds, again, it sounds like we're getting in that thin territory where we're losing a lot more of the good stuff that we're actually going to want to use. And it seems like a lot of the bad frequencies are still pretty prominent in there. In this 20 degree, it's almost as if it's pulling out some of the high end hiss, but preserving everything else. It's actually pretty close to the on axis. Let's take another listen here. <laughs> It would still require a little bit of cleanup, but I really do think that the 20 degree is a little bit more easily usable than the on axis. When listening to these, I obviously know there's going to be EQ that needs to be done. So I'm listening to them with a mindset of how much work am I going to have to do to this to make it sound exactly how I want it once it's in the mix. Because when mixing, you really want to be able to spend as little time as possible fixing up whatever you tracked. In this case with subtractive EQ, cleaning up whatever frequencies are going to be standing out too much and covering up other things in the mix. So I'm kind of digging the 20 degrees right now. Let me listen to the other 20 degree off axis positions. We'll just cycle down the list. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm just not a fan of these far positions. Like, there's potential for maybe some layering of the two, but I don't know. I feel like there's you're ju you're just losing too much of the fullness, and I feel like you're gonna spend a lot more time trying to make it sound full once you pull out the frequencies that you don't want in there. Now, I might have to say I like the cap edge of the 20 degree off axis a little bit more. It's almost a little bit too dark for my liking, and the cap edge one brings us a little bit closer to our on axis, but overall a little bit cleaner. Let's compare this guy to this guy. Their low end is near identical. There is a little bit more high end fizz in here, but yeah, I don't think it's anything that would be that hard to get rid of. It seems like this one right now has the best of all the different things that we've liked so far. Out of all of our on axis and 20 degree off axis, I'd say this close cap edge one is our current winner. Um, I don't think I'm gonna like any of these 45 degree ones, but let's just give them a listen through one time. <laughs> Honestly, they all sound kind of thin and not that usable, so I'm just going to throw those ones away. I'd say right now our top two are the 20 degree off axis close cap edge and the on axis close 
mid cone. Now I'm not saying that any of the other ones would never be usable by any means, but at my first listen right now, these are the two that I would go for. I just think those are the ones that jump out to me as, yeah, I could spend less than five minutes getting the proper EQ on these and be able to move on to something else in the mix and really trust that these are sounding as good as they could be. Again, that's a mindset I need to have because I don't want to spend an hour and a half EQing my guitars, adding all these extra effects just to try to make them sound good. I want them to sound good and maybe have to do the slightest bit of cleanup and then move forward. So our last little test here is just going to be jumping back to the original mix. And obviously this is not the way you would normally do things, but we're just going to drag and drop our top two tones right here, right into the mix and see how they sound. Just throwing them in, listening to them with a mix that's already in place. Yeah, I know this is not like the the best way to test these out, but it's the easiest way that I can just get a quick result right now and really develop a proper opinion on which is our best position for this application. So here we are back in the main mix. We're just gonna mute the rhythm guitars that are there. We're also gonna mute the vocals so that we can uh, really pay attention to just the guitars right now. I'm also gonna do a little bit of volume matching to the guitars that were originally in there and panning as well. All right, again, I know this is not the absolute best test or anything, but at least we'll get a quick impression of which of these two is something we actually might use. So we're muting the original guitar here, and let's start with the on-axis mid-cone close position. It actually sounds pretty good, dude. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually really surprised and I already like it more than the tone that I had originally used for this mix. So that's a win there already. Let's listen to the 20 degree off axis cap edge close position. I don't know, I just like the way everything ties together once we drop these in here. It, so it sounds really good, honestly. Both are winners in my book right now. Uh, it's gonna be really hard to pick which of the two is better, but let me listen to it a little bit more here. Back to the on axis. I don't know, man. The the twenty degree off axis ones, they sound pretty fucking mean. I think I think those are gonna be our winners for today. So at least for my particular SM57, that particular speaker, that particular cab, and this particular mix, close position, twenty degrees off axis, cap edge. That is. That's the winner for me. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and do this exact position with your mic on your cap. All speakers are gonna be different. All mics are gonna be a little different. Obviously, the tone that you have coming out of your amp is going to be different. Your player is gonna be different. Everything is a variable that has a part in developing your end tone. Also, you have to consider everything else in your mix. How does your drum sound with one position versus another? How does your bass sound? How do your vocals sound? There are so many different variables, but what we did learn is that take your time with your mic positioning. Whatever tone you're getting into your DAW for your guitar, make sure it's good from the start. Take the time to get a good amp setting, take the time to get a good mic position, make sure everything that you're initially tracking into your computer is as good as it could possibly be because that's much less time that you had to spend mixing. Look, I literally just dropped 
these guitars into the session and they sounded sick. And if I could do that with every instrument in the mix, I obviously would. So hopefully you guys learned something here today. I sure did. And I'm going to be taking everything that we just experienced into consideration from now on. Let me know if you have any discoveries that you come up with once moving different mic positions or anything maybe weird that I didn't think of or anything else that you want me to try. Well, I'm happy we made it through this. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one.